Alright guys, BLM here, back with a new video, and in this video we will be ranking every main series season of Big Brother US. So, since I'm making this at the beginning of BB21, I will be going over BBs 1 through 20. I will not be going over Celebrity Big Brothers 1, 2, or OTT, because 1, I feel like 20 seasons is a good number to do this video by, and also, to be honest, those seasons wouldn't rank too high anyway. For me, Celebrity Big Brother 2 is probably at the very bottom of the real seasons, and then Celebrity Big Brother 1 and OTT are probably back-to-back, -back, somewhere around the 5 or 6 from the bottom range. So I'm not really going to include those in this video. Now, I should also mention, I did not actually do a full rewatch for this video. That would be a ridiculous task to do. I did do a full rewatch a couple years ago. So a lot of my opinions are based on those, though to be honest, some of my opinions have changed since then as well. Now, final disclaimer, obviously there will be spoilers. Spoilers for every season. Don't watch it if you don't want to get spoiled, blah, blah, blah. All right, then, with that out of the way, let's get started. So we're starting off with number 20. The worst season of the main series of Big Brother is, I think it's pretty obvious, right? It's Big Brother 1. Obviously, it's the season that started it all, but, I mean, did it really? <laughs> I mean, it's a completely different game. I mean, it's the original Big Brother format, the format that's used internationally... But in the U.S., it just didn't work. And to be honest, I only watched the season once. I, when I did my full rewatch years ago, I didn't bother to rewatch Big Brother 1. I mean, one, it's a ridiculous task anyway. There's, what, like 70 episodes? Mind you, some of them are half an hour, but still, it's like, it's still 70 episodes. I mean, it's a completely different game. No real strategic gameplay going on. And to be honest, it's really boring. So the first time and only time I did watch this was, what, like, I think, like, eight years ago now? It was around the time of Big Brother 13, so it's been a while, but to be honest, who cares? It's not even the format that I dislike about this season. I, I've watched seasons of Big Brother UK. I've watched seasons of Big Brother Australia. My Australia is kind of different, but I've enjoyed both of those series. Season 1 of Big Brother US just sucks. I mean, the cast is pretty mediocre, especially a lot of the people that make it far. I feel like some of the more interesting personalities were just hated by America and voted out very early. Also, it's just so obvious that Eddie was going to win the entire show from the very beginning. Once he shows up without a leg, having survived cancer, it's like, hey, come on, what are we doing? So yeah, easy, worst season ever. Now moving on to number 19, we have our first real season of Big Brother. And I should give this disclaimer, outside of season one, I do actually enjoy every other season. Yes, a lot of seasons have more faults than others. There's not even really a perfect season, but I still get some level of enjoyment from every season of the show. So even though this season is at the very bottom of the list, I do actually like certain parts of it. That being said, number 19 is going to be a season I don't think many people will agree with me on, but I don't really care. The worst real season of Big Brother for me is Big Brother 4. And I feel like when people think of Big Brother 4, they think of June and Allison. That's really all people really think about. But if you take a deeper d look into the season, it's not that good. I always found this season pretty hard to get into. I mean, the cast here is so bad. I mean, June and Allison, again, are fine. I mean, Allison's a fantastic character. June is just kind of fine on TV. But when the fan favorite of the season is Robert, I think there's seriously something wrong there. Then also, like, this season's just filled with terrible gameplay, too. No one really plays extraordinarily well. June and Allison do pick up the pieces towards the end of the game and really dominate from that point forward. But even them, like, I never actually liked them during the season. It's just that they were playing better than the rest. And if it wasn't for them, this season would be even worse. And from where we're at the modern day, this cast is just largely forgettable. Again, outside of June and Allison, I mean, like, who's really that memorable from the season? I mean, maybe G? This is also the season with the X-Factor twist, which I thought was an interesting twist. I mean, it's kind of borderline on trashy. I do think it brought an interesting dynamic to the show and to the game. My problem with it is I don't understand why everyone didn't have an X. Like, it's really strange that they were, like, I think three people, right, that were, like, kind of left out of it. It's like, why was that a thing? And also, I just feel like this season has a massive lack of memorable moments. I mean, the season does have a decent start, though. Again, the introduction of the X-Factor twist was fine. We had the second week, which was a blind side. That was cool. Week three is probably the best week of the entire game, where Dana blows up her game to target Allison. And Allison's able to manipulate Nathan to use the veto on her, which blows up his game. But outside of that, this season is just pretty weak. So that's why it's here at number 19. Now we're moving on. Number 18, the second worst real season of Big Brother. We have what most people probably would have expected to be at the bottom. We have a Big Brother 19, which, I mean, is pretty universally disliked. I don't think... Does anyone like Big Brother 19? 
That being said, I do think there's more highlights than people like to give it credit for. I do think the game starts off really strong. With that first week where Cody tries to blindside Paul and after that Christmas and it just completely blows up in his face, that's pretty fun to watch. I thought the Dominique week was pretty fun. The Ramsey week was really, really fun. Where Jessica is probably one of the worst HOH reigns in the history of Big Brother. The problem here is that there's a massive lull after that. I mean, they spend, what, three weeks trying to get rid of both Jess and Cody after that. Then after that, it's a pretty easy boot for Elena and Mark as well. It's not until we get to that eight-person alliance at the very end that it starts to get a bit more interesting. That's when Paul really had to maneuver his way around all of these alliances, backstabbing a person every week, and I thought that was fascinating to watch. But, like, through this gameplay, we also see, like, the abysmal jury management of Paul which is really some of the worst gameplay I've ever seen from a dominant player. And I thought Paul losing to Josh at the very end was such a fantastic moment for the show. And it might but be the best finale of the show ever. Now from a casting standpoint though, I do feel like the cast is pretty weak for the most part. Outside of what, Jessica, Cody, Paul, Josh, I don't feel like anyone here is really too, too memorable. I mean, maybe Alex, but she was so annoying. Kevin, but again, he didn't really play the game. I guess Jason was fine, but again, overall, this cast though was pretty weak. And they also brought just very little entertainment, a lot of that being because of Paul's complete dominance of the game. And also the thing about this season too that kind of sours me on it is just the negativity of this season. Again, while Paul did play a fantastic game, he did also use bullying sort of techniques in order to dominate the game. And while it's very impressive gameplay, I do feel like it's very hard to watch. So yeah, I mean, again, while there are a couple fantastic moments, I, I'd even mention the Jason blindside, that's fantastic as well. But while there are fantastic moments, the cast is pretty weak, and to be honest, most of the game is pretty dull. So that's why I have it here at number 18. Now we're moving on. Number 17, we have a very early season of the show, and I know a lot of people love this season, and people are going to disagree with me on this, but I don't really care. My fourth least favorite season of the show is Big Brother 2. Now, I like Big Brother 2. I think Big Brother 2 is a really good season. However, I just like every other season more. And that's something I noticed when I did my rewatch a couple years ago, is that when I was watching Big Brother 2, I was enjoying it. But just like as I went from season to season after that, I just realized that there was just almost every season was overtaking it. Now, obviously the season's very iconic. There's a lot of iconic moments on this season. We have the Dr. Will stuff. We have a uh, Shannon toothbrush with Hardy. We have the first blind side of a pawn. We have the Justin expulsion. And there's also some all-time great characters with obviously Dr. Will being the forefront of that. But I do feel like from a gameplay perspective, this season's relatively dry. We do have Nicole and Hardy dominate from the mid-game to the final four. And we did have Will like just being able to survive and providing great TV through that. But that's most of what this season has to offer. Another massive flaw for me is, well, I mean, the lack of a veto, which that's not necessarily the problem itself, but the problem is the pacing. The pacing of the show is just so messed up where it's so slow, which is a problem I have with older reality TV show seasons in general anyway, and we'll talk about that when we get to Survivor as well. But the way that the shows were edited here were just so slow paced, and I feel like it was very hard to continue watching, especially in those middle episodes. The episodes in the middle of the week where like almost nothing happens, because the nominations are already set. The eviction is the episode afterwards, so this episode's really just filled with filler. And also the pacing wasn't helped by the Justin expulsion either, which caused there to be a week where literally no one went home. So while this is an iconic season of the show, it's very tough for me to rank it any higher, mainly because I feel like I like the other seasons more. So that's why I have this at number 17. Now we're moving on. Number 16, we have, well, season 16. But yeah, BB16 is here. It's a season that I remember was really disliked at the time that it was airing. I feel like people have warmed up to it since then, but it's still not good. So now the positive about this season, I do feel like there's some really notable cast members. Obviously, we have Derek and Cody, we have Frankie, we have Beast Mode Cowboy, we have Zach Rance, we have Nicole, we have Donnie, we have Devin. I think there's some fantastic cast members on this season. The problem is, I feel like there's also some really forgettable people. I mean, outside of the Beast Mode Cowboy stuff, Amber's really forgettable. Jocasta sucks. I mean, Britney's, like, whatever. Joey is whatever. I mean, Pow Pow. I mean, like, really, like, this is a very top-heavy season in terms of its cast. With a lot of the women being the ones that underwhelmed me in the season. But the main reason it's so low for me is because I do feel like the gameplay was just so blah. Like, looking at the game week to week, it's just, it, there were a lot of, like, just really boring weeks. I mean, the most interesting week of the game was probably week two during the Devin HOH. He tries to blindside Zach, and then Zach saves himself, or I guess technically Derek saves him, but whatever. 
And also the week where Zax almost goes home over Jocasta. That was a really good week. But outside of that, the game is super slow. And a lot of that's because of Derek's stranglehold on the game. He took control in week two and held control the entire way through. There was never really a point where he was in danger and he was dictating most of the action. And the end game is just so boring. I mean, once Zach gets saved over Jocasta, it's pretty much a straight shot from there. I mean, the only interesting thing ha to happen at that point was probably what? Just the Frankie having to do the Battle of the Block by himself. Which, by the way, Battle of the Block also sucks. I don't know why they kept it for so long. It really paused the gameplay where it became very hard for the underdog to take control of the game. Which helped Derek even more. So while I do think watching Derek dominate the game was interesting to a degree, I can't rank this season any higher. I mean, there's just so many boring weeks. So that's why I have it here at number 16. So now we're at number 15. We have a season that I like more than most people. I know a lot of people have this towards the bottom of the list. It's the almost universally hated season of the show. But I enjoy it. And it is Big Brother 9. And obviously I share a lot of the criticisms that most people have. The de Till Death Do Part twist is dumb. And it does screw over a lot of the more likable people in the game like Parker and Alex. Who were well positioned socially but were taken out due to their partners. And I know most people dislike the cast. I personally don't dislike the cast. I mean, I thought most of them were entertaining. Now, are they terrible human beings, especially at this time? Yes. Yes, they are. But I still found them fascinating and pretty entertaining for the most part. But yeah, I mean, the first half of the season's filled with a lot of drama. Not a lot of gameplay. There is gameplay, obviously, but it's not super strong. But I do feel like what really kicks the season into gear for me is once the Till Death Do part twist ends. Once we get to the final 10, from that point on, I really enjoy this season. I mean, we have Ryan, who was out the door and got saved by the twist, win HOH, blindsides James, James gets taken out, only to get voted back into the game and win HOH himself where he blindsides Maddie, which is probably one of my favorite moments of the entire season. And from that point on, yes, there's kind of a pagonging in a sense. I mean, like, all of James' allies go home after that. But the target was James. And to see him win veto after veto was really fascinating for me to watch. Him Seeing him fight on his own, pretty much, to try to stay in the game, I thought it was really fun. And once James goes at the final six, the game remains interesting. Natalie blows up her game at the final five. That was fun. And at final four, we have... Ryan ruining his game to vote out Sharon so that he could take Adam to the end who he easily loses against. And I feel like the end game for me is very underrated. I love this end game. I think Adam plays this end game so well where he makes Ryan do all of his dirty work. He has pretty perfect jury management and I think he's probably one of the more underrated winners. But at the end of the day, again, there are negatives to the season, blatant negatives. I can't put it any higher than 15 here, but I still do like this season. I wish more people would give it a shot. Now at number 14, we have a season that I am relatively mixed on, to be honest. I mean, it's a season I do enjoy. I enjoyed it when I initially watched it, but I do think as time has gone on, my opinion of it has gone down a bit. And that is Big Brother 12. And the reason why it's so low is because I do feel like it's a slog from a gameplay perspective at multiple points in the game. But the thing that saves this season is, is its cast. I feel like the cast here is incredible. Every single person here brings something to the table. We have some really iconic characters here like Brennan and Rachel. We have Brittany. We have Matt. We have Lane. We have Enzo. I mean, the brigade as a whole, even though I feel like Hayden is probably the most boring of the bunch, but it's fine. Even Reagan brought his moments. I mean, we got Captain Kosher, we got... Even Annie was fine. I mean, Monet, I pretty much listed the entire cast at this point. Kristen, might as well mention her at this point. But yeah, this entire cast was really good. And we do have some pretty iconic moments, like the uh, Flores Gravel Life Fest. We have Captain Kosher's speech before he goes out. We have the Diamond Power Veto. We have the Matt Blind Side. But I feel like it's a lot of the, like, in-between that I find pretty slow. There's not, again, from a gameplay perspective, there's no real big gameplay moment. Even the map blind side is just kind of okay at the end of the day. And the game pretty much plays out pretty standardly. I mean, there's no real big moment gameplay-wise. That being said, I do enjoy this. I actually really enjoy this season. This is one of the first seasons that I watched after getting really into Big Brother. But I do feel like once Rachel goes, the episodes themselves really start to drag. So that's why I have it ranked here at number 14. So now we're moving on to number 13. We're back to an older season of Big Brother. But it's probably one of my favorite older seasons. And that is Big Brother 
three. I think out of these, like, really classic seasons, these seasons that came out before I even started watching Big Brother, I think three is probably my favorite of those. But again, like the other older seasons, I do feel like the pacing of the actual episodes are relatively slow. Slower than I would have personally preferred, which makes the ranking go down a bit there. I do think the cast is fantastic. I mean, we do have a couple duds like, what, Tanya and Eric... But everyone else is pretty fantastic TV. And there are obviously some really iconic moments. Danielle and Jason just completely dominating the game was really fun to watch. With them being two of my favorite characters in the entirety of the show. Danielle is also just such a fantastic character. And obviously the Marcellus blind side is one of the best moments in the history of the show. And we start off the season with two really close votes that I thought were pretty fun as well. The problem is that I don't feel like the show really illustrated those votes. Like, I still don't even know what happened on that first vote. But I feel like the show itself focused less on the gameplay, even though there's a lot of fascinating gameplay going on. But again, my biggest issue with it is the pacing. The pacing is the biggest issue here. And that's why I have it at number 13. Now we're moving on. Number 12, we have a season that I know people would put a lot lower on the list than I do. But I will admit that I do have a lot of nostalgia for this season, and this season's Big Brother 11. Big Brother 11 is the season that brought me back to the show. I kind of dropped off after season 8, but then I returned at BB11, and I've loved the show ever since. And I think part of that is blinding me on this season. I do have a lot of faults with this season. But, I mean, I just love the house divide here in the pre-jury. I thought it was really fun to watch. These two sides go after each other, kind of similar to BB6 in a way. Though, unlike BB6, one side just gets completely dominated here. I mean, the first week itself is fantastic, where we get a tied vote, where Ronnie was the swing vote, and he's lying to the Braden side, making them think they have the numbers, when really, obviously, they didn't, and then we have Jesse voting him out. And really, I mean, it's Ronnie and Russell that really make the show during these first few weeks. If it wasn't for them, I do feel like these episodes would have been a lot slower. But once we get to the mid-game, I mean, the Jeff coup d'etat does kind of ruin things. I feel like that, along with the Shima expulsion, really drags out the next few rounds. But the thing is, the coup d'etat was fantastic TV. I thought it was fantastic TV. That and, I mean, and the Shima expulsion as well. They're both fantastic TV. There's some really iconic moments that I'll always remember, but... Again, they did kind of ruin the season from that point on. And also, I found the cast pretty entertaining. I, I, My favorite character on the season is Russell. He was my rooting interest at the time. Obviously, we have the start of the Jeff and Jordan stuff. We have Ronnie. I mean, I thought Jesse was great on this season. Shima was a great character. Kevin was a great player. Natalie was really annoying, but entertaining at points. So while I don't feel like this season is perfect by any means, I do feel like I enjoy this season more than most. So that's why I have this season at number 12. So now speaking of seasons that I enjoy more than other people, we're moving on to number 11 where we have Big Brother 13. And I don't know what to tell you. I, I love Big Brother 13. And also I am biased towards Big Brother 13 as well. Big Brother 13 is the first season where I started paying attention to the feeds. I didn't fully watch the feeds yet, but I did start paying attention. Like I started looking at Jokers and that sort of stuff. And that obviously has an impact on my rankings of the season. Then also coming in from BB12, I was actually a big Brendan fan. I was a big, well, Brendan and Rachel to a degree, but I was a big Brendan fan. So I was really happy to see him back at this point. And speaking of that, the returnees themselves, I thought they were pretty good choices. Also, I have Jordan. I, I don't feel like I needed Jordan back, but I feel like I was happy to see Jeff back. Dick and Danielle were fantastic to have back as well. I thought it was a good cast of returnees. And I am one that I don't dislike fans versus favorites formats. I know a lot of people are like, oh, either all returnee or no returnee. But for me, I'm okay with half and half. I don't particularly like like the four returnees and then rest are newbies. I don't particularly like that, but I'm okay with around half and half. Something I don't love though is that I don't love this like power duo twist that they did this season. I thought it was just really stifling the gameplay especially with the safety that they were given once their partner went out of the game. But I did think this season played out pretty well. I, I think the Keith blindside at the very beginning was fantastic. And by week three, we have Danielle's game blowing up where she tries to get Brandon and Rachel to target Jeff and Jordan. The Lawan boot is a really fantastic, like, iconic moment for me. I mean, the double eviction this season is probably my favorite double eviction ever. I don't know. We'll see. I might do a video on that in the future. I think that'll be an interesting one. But it's definitely up there where the Jeff blindside is just so perfect this season. 
And I know a lot of people have problems with the rigging at the final six, which, yeah, I mean, I, I think, to be honest, I have no problem with the Pandora's box. I, I have problems with it, but I don't feel like it really impacted that much on the season. I think the more blatant rigging for me is the final six veto competition. That was the endurance challenge that Rachel won earlier in the season. I think that's kind of iffy. But again, for me, as a Brendan and kind of Rachel fan at the time, I was really happy with the result of the season. Even though, again, Rachel didn't play the strongest game in the world. I do think it was a pretty good result. I think that's part of the reason why I have this ranked at number 11. All right, halfway through. Number 10. We're moving on to number 10, which is a season that is another one that I feel like I like more than most people. I'm actually surprised this season got as much hate as it did. And that is Big Brother 18. And I think this season really benefits from a rewatch. I think on the rewatch, I enjoyed this season so much more. And I know, again, people don't like the returnees and stuff, but I feel like without the returnees here, this season would have been a bit more bland. I mean, we had Frank and Devon, who were pretty big characters in the early game here. I mean, James, yeah, I could have done without James. But Nicole played a fantastic game, and we'll talk about that in the winner ranking whenever we get around to that, but... We also had some great characters in the newbies as well. We had Paul, Victor, Polly, even Tiffany was a train wreck. Glenn and Jose were fantastic early boots. And we do have a couple other ones that are more forgettable, but I mean, I thought the cast overall here was pretty strong. I also think the season itself stayed pretty consistent throughout. I mean, we had a couple of great blindsides in the beginning of the game. We had Jose, we had Bronte. And while it was a unanimous vote, I feel like the Tiffany week was fantastic as she, along with Frank, fought until the very last second. And while there's a little bit of a lull after that, the fall of Polly during the Zakia week is fantastic. Where he goes from having a complete stranglehold of the game, completely dominating the game one week, to one week later being out the door. And even towards the end game, we had some really fascinating votes. We had the Victor's second eviction, which I thought was really, really interesting. A lot of great gameplay from Nicole there. Plus there being a possibility for a last minute flip that didn't end up happening. And the Michelle boot was also fantastic. Again, great gameplay from Nicole. Where she picks up Paul and Victor. And then, well, the very, very end of the game, I do feel like it slows down a bit after that Michelle boot. But the season is never actively bad, in my opinion. But I do think this is an example of why seasons should be shorter. I do feel like the season was a bit longer than it needed to be. And I feel like if it was a shorter season, it might be even higher on the list. But I still think in its current form, it's still good enough to to be here at number 10. Now we're moving on. Number 9, we're back to an older season of the show. And it's the oldest season remaining. It's Big Brother 5, which is another season I have a lot of nostalgia for. Big Brother 5 is the first season I have any recollection of watching live. Big Brother 5, like, had a lot of stuff I really loved when I, even when I was a kid. I mean, like, the Nokomis and Cowboy stuff was really strange that that was even a thing. But that was interesting to watch. I mean, the twin twist is one of my all-time favorite moments in the history of Big Brother. The reveal of the twin twist, I should say. And this season also has a good chunk of fantastic characters. I mean, Jay, Scott, Marvin, um, Diane. But to be honest, thinking objectively, I do think this season probably should be a couple spots lower. But I do think the nostalgia does factor in a bit, and I do rank this a bit higher. But the thing is that this season has some really fantastic moments. I mean, we had the Four Horsemen, the rise and fall of the Four Horsemen. That was fun to watch. We had the execution of the Six Finger Plan. We had the Will Blind side. We had the Diane move at the final five. We had Drew cutting Diane at the final three. There's so many great moments on this season. But that being said, there are a couple dull weeks. And there are some weaker casting choices throughout the season that... I do feel like it makes it so I can't go any higher than number 9. So that's why it is where it is. Now we're moving on to number 8. We're back to a modern season of the show. And we have Big Brother 17. And from this point on, I feel like the seasons are really good. I feel like this is kind of the start of a top tier of seasons. But this season does have its share of downsides. I do think the biggest of which is that it has a very meh mid-game. From the point after Shelly goes out until what? Like after James goes out, that entire stretch of the game is pretty dull. It's like what? It's Jackie, Becky, Johnny Mac, Meg, and James all going home. Which is like, again, lackluster and pretty predictable. The Meg week, though, is a bit more interesting, though the result itself is, again, pretty boring. But the beginning and end of the season are fantastic. A lot of the intrigue from the first few weeks comes from Audrey and her really rampant gameplay style. But even after she leaves, we have the Jason boot week, where Austin was on the chopping block for most of the week until he's able to convince Vanessa not to put him on the block. 
We have Vanessa surviving a quote-unquote backdoor. Technically, she did play in the veto, but whatever. But that was fun. The entire end game is fantastic to watch, where we see Vanessa and Steve both navigate their way through this end game to have the season pretty much come down to that final HOH competition where whoever wins that wins the game. I even mentioned the Austin blind side, which is probably one of my favorite blind sides in the history of the series. The cast as a whole is very strong here. Again, there are a couple casting choices that aren't as strong as others, like Jeff, Jackie, Becky. But even they did bring something to the table. But we also have some really great characters here, like Vanessa, Johnny Mac, Austin. Even James was fun during this season. So, yeah, I, mean, I really enjoy this season. But again, the length of this season does make it get a bit blown especially at that middle of the game which is why it's placed here at number eight now we're moving on to number seven we have a, another somewhat recent season this is a season that people either love or hate and obviously i lean towards the love side of things not really entirely there but it is big brother 15 and obviously the big downside of the season is the racism if we take out the racism from this season it probably ranks a few spots higher but i do think that's a level of negativity that we can't really fully ignore. Thankfully, it's mostly contained within like a three-week period. That is probably the th weakest th three weeks of the game as a whole anyway. But it's still not great. But this season does start off really strong, and a lot of that being due to the moving company. They're able to control that first week where David gets blindsided, and then the next week they themselves get blindsided after McCray flips on them. Leading to Nick Blindside, which is another one of my all-time favorite blindsides. To see a move that massive that early on in the game, like that big of a betrayal, that was really mind-blowing to me. And then, as I said, after that we get about three weeks where the racism stuff really took over the game and the house. And it's really not great. I mean, it's, it's, it's not fun to watch. It's really a massive downside on the season. But it's like, once we get past the canvas boot, I feel like the game really picks up again. We get the Judd blindside right after that, and that's fantastic. And a contender for one of the best double evictions ever. After that, we have all these big players being taken out back to back to back. We have Helen, Aaron, and Amanda. And Amanda's blindside again, another fantastic one, which is followed by the second double eviction, where Alyssa gets taken out, which is another one of the contenders for the best double evictions ever. A lot of that having to do with Andy massively outplaying Alyssa, getting McCray to take her out, and speaking of that, this is probably the most game-savvy cast in the history of Big Brother. Where outside of what, like Gina Marie and Alyssa, I feel like the final nine players in the game are extremely strategically competent and made some strong plays throughout the season. So while this season does have its slow points and it does also have the racism, I do feel like there are some high highs of this season. So I have it here at number seven. Now we're moving on. Number six, we have... What I would consider like the top of another sub tier, I would consider the top five seasons to kind of be in a league of their own. So at number six here, right below that, we have Big Brother 8, which is another pretty fun season. It, it's a season that is pretty consistently good throughout. There are very few down weeks. But that being said, I do feel like the cast is kind of mixed. There's a couple duds. There's people like Mike, Carol. I mean, Zach is, he's whatever. But, I mean, we do get some fantastic characters out of this season, too, like Dick, Danielle, Eric, Jessica, Amber, even though she's annoying, and Jen. It's a pretty strong cast, I guess. And we get some really great moments throughout, a lot of them having to do with Evil Dick. And as terrible of a human being he probably actually is, he's fantastic TV. And the drama he brought to the season, along with along with Jen too, Jen was fantastic TV too, they really made the early game here. But eventually we do get some fun gameplay as well, where Eric is able to survive a back door. And then the Dustin Blindside is one of the best moments in the history of the show. But again, another big downside of the season is the America's Player twist. I, I really hate it. I mean, it, it's terrible. And it sucks that Eric didn't get to play his own game. But then again, I think it's probably better for the entertainment of the show that he didn't get to. Because I do feel like Eric probably would have dominated the game from beginning to end if it wasn't for the America's Player twist. And because of the America's Player twist, we do get a dick win, which is not a great winner. But I mean, it's fantastic narratively for this season to have... This father-daughter duo who hated each other at the beginning of the season come back together and able to dominate the end game. So this is kind of a weird season. There's a lot of faults, but there's also a lot of positives. But I thought I even doubt that he'd be here at number six. All right, now we're here at the top five. My top five seasons of all time. Again, I consider them a league of their own. I think they're their own separate tier. They're best of the best. And the season I have at number five here, to be honest, is a bit lower than what I would have initially thought. But it is the season that got me into Big Brother, and that is Big Brother 6. So while Big Brother 5 is the first thing I have recollection of, 
Big Brother 6 is the season that I really loved when watching it. I mean, I was such a big Caser fan back in the day. And I was so disappointed when he went home, like, twice. But yeah, I mean, this season is pretty universally loved, I feel like. And while, obviously, I don't love it as much as some other people, because a lot of people have it ranked, like, 2, 3, somewhere in that sort of range. It is a fantastic season. I mean, we have a house divide. They go back and forth every week, which was really fun to watch. However... The gameplay between these power shifts was pretty tame most of the time. And, I mean, with the exception of the first Howie HOH and the second Caser Eviction, I feel like once we saw who won HOH, it became pretty standard. Like, it's like we knew who was going home. I mean, this entire endgame is pretty predictable once you see who won the comp. As iconic as the season is, with so many great characters, so many great fights... I do feel like that's a massive downside on the season. That being said, the Kaser HOH week is probably one of my favorite weeks of Big Brother ever. We get some iconic characters like Janelle, Howie, James, and Kaser. But again, while this season is extremely iconic and I have a lot of nostalgia for it, the gameplay of the season does get stale by the end. So I do have the ranking here at number five. Now moving on to number four, where we have a season that I feel like most people have soured on over time. I personally still have it ranked pretty high. It's the most recent season of Big Brother. It is Big Brother 20, which I loved watching live. But the main reason the season's not higher, to be honest, it would have been probably could have even been number one. The reason it isn't is because the season's really dragged out in the back third. The back third gets pretty boring. However, everything up to that point is fantastic. We have blindside after blindside this season. I mean, we have the Steve blindside, Winston blindside, Rachel blindside, which were all all-time great blindsides. We have some fun moments throughout. We have the Swaggy C nomination ceremony, which was fantastic. We have Caitlyn and the puzzle. We have the Bailey and Tyler fight. We have Rockstar's veto mishap. We have JC convincing Fessy to put up Scotty. We have the Brett blindside. There are fantastic moments in this season. We have the fight between Rockstar and Brett. I mean, this is a fantastic season through the first two-thirds of the game. The problem is, in the back third, we have Casey, Tyler, and Angela winning all the comps, dominating the game, and from that point, it does get a bit stale. But again, it is just the tail end of the game, so I'm not going to fully dock the entire season because of that. Then also the cast here is fantastic. I, I thought almost, pretty much everyone brought something to the table. So I do love BB20. It had a lot of potential to be all-time great season, number one or number two. But I do feel like the season didn't end in the best fashion. Also with Tyler losing at the very end kind of lowers my opinion of the season as well. So it's stuck here at number four. Now we're moving on to number three. We have a season that's pretty much universally looked at as one of the best seasons of the show. And that is Big Brother 7. We have Big Brother All-Stars. It's a fantastic season. And a lot of that comes from Chilltown. I mean, if it wasn't for Will and Boogie, I, I do feel like this season would have been relatively tame. I mean, to see all these all-star characters in the house was great. But for me, most of the cast was just that. They were characters. They weren't strong players. I mean, coming into this season, the only great players on this cast were what? Like Will and Danielle? I mean, maybe Diane, maybe Allison. I think James definitely had the ability to play really hard. But that's pretty much it. And while we do have some really strong rounds early on, like the Allison boot, the uh, Jace boot, I don't feel like the season's as consistent throughout. I mean... It's fun to watch Chilltown completely dominate the game from Final 9 to Final 5. But, to be honest, these weren't really that explosive of rounds. I mean, the Howie boot was a really fun blindside. And, like, I mean, there's him arguing with Boogie on the way out. That was pretty big. But, but I don't know. I mean, for me, it, it just feels like something's missing in this endgame. Compared to my Final 2 seasons, where throughout my the Final 2 seasons, I was consistently entertained the entire way through. I do feel like there's points in All-Stars here towards the end where it's just kind of like, okay, yeah, that's going to happen. So yeah, that's why I have it ranked here at number three. Now I'm moving on to number two. And I got to be honest, this used to be my number one season of all time. After my last rewatch of the series, this was my number one. But after some more thought, I did decide to rank it down one spot as I do feel like there's a lot of minor flaws of this season. And it is Big Brother 14. And I think one of the biggest problems here is its cast, which I do think is on the weaker side with some pretty weak newbies. And this cast as a whole is pretty top-heavy. I mean, we have Ian, Dan, Danielle, Frank, Brittany, and Boogie. And they really get a lot of the screen time. And then there's people like Jen, and Joe, Ashley, and Will, who are largely ignored. I mean, JoJo, we can add to that. Even Kara. I mean, like, there's a lot of people that just don't get much screen time. 
But the season as a whole was fantastic. I mean, we start off with the coach's twist, which I didn't love as a concept. But if it wasn't for that, this season wouldn't be as good as it was. Because a lot of the reason that I love this season is because of Dan and the massive presence he had on this season. And we do get a really good first week of the show. The war between Frank and Willie was really fascinating. And while the game does slow down a bit after Willie's expulsion... We do get the Janelle blindside, which is fun. We do get the first double, which is a really fun double where Mike gets booted, followed by Frank having the win veto to save himself, and then Ashley getting booted with Frank being really pissed off. At the final eight, we have Dan's funeral, which, I mean, is pretty self-explanatory. And from that point on, it's just fun to watch Dan completely dominate the game and having to deal with a lot of circumstances that he didn't prefer i mean there's a lot of points where his target would win veto or hoh or whatever and he couldn't get out the person that he wanted and i feel like how he adapted to that was really interesting to watch there's not a single misstep in this end game i mean we have the frank blind side the shane blind side is so fantastic that double eviction is fantastic where ian was the target but he's able to win veto causing joe to go home this end game is so good and while there are a couple weaker weeks earlier on like the jojo and will boots but I do think those things are what made me place the this season here at number two instead of number one. All right, now it's time for number one, my favorite season of Big Brother US, and really my favorite season of Big Brother of all time, is Big Brother 10, which is one of the few that I didn't watch live. Yeah, I missed seasons nine and 10, but 10 is fantastic. And it's a season I didn't actually watch until right before BB-14. I think this has probably the best cast of newbies ever. There's literally no one here that's a dud. I mean, I, I, maybe Angie, but very few duds on this cast. I'm, I'm very surprised that we haven't seen more returnees from this season. But yeah, I mean, like most of the characters on this season were fantastic characters. And the same goes for the game itself. But yeah, outside of Angie, I would say that every player here was a fantastic character. And the same goes for the game itself, where each week of the game brought something really interesting to the table, except for the Angie boot week. I mean, week one had the rise and fall of Brian. Week two had Dan fighting for his life to stay against Steven. Season four had the Jesse blind side and Keisha's birthday. Season five had the retaliation from the Jesse blind side from Michelle. Week six, okay, maybe week six isn't that great, but week seven, we get the nomination replacement roulette and the double eviction there where Ollie just storms out of the house. We have the week eight where Memphis wins the veto and uses it on Dan against Jerry's wishes. At the end game there, we have Memphis betraying Keisha and doing Dan's dirty work. And throughout this endgame, it's just so much fun to watch Dan win Big Brother. It's fun to watch him completely dominate this endgame and have some of the best jury management I've ever seen. So for me, Big Brother 10 is the season to beat. And to be honest, I don't feel like we'll get it anytime soon, especially with these extended seasons that we have now. But it is a near perfect season in my eyes. So that's why I have it at number one. So there we go. That is every single Big Brother US season. Well, I mean every main series one again celebrity big brother and ott was standing and yeah it was a lot that was a lot i can't wait to do this for survivor oh my god really it's gonna be so long but okay so yeah that's it for big brother us that's the video that's it this has been long but yeah thank you for watching